Hi, and welcome to the webinar today, Discover What Powers a Zero Platinum Partners website. So we're just going to get started in about a minute's time, and I'll introduce my guest, Brad, just shortly. But before I do that, it'd be great to know where you're dialing in from today. So if you want to use the chat and just tell us where you're dialing in from today, I'd love to know that. I am in the uh, South Island of New Zealand. Nice cold and sunny day today. Hopefully some snow coming on the mountains because the ski fields are not really getting going yet. So we're, we're looking for that. Um, hi, Kathy from Edmonton in Alberta in Canada. Great to have you here. So um, Brad's up in Auckland. Hello, Brad. How are you doing? Hi, good, good. I'm in a, um, south of Auckland in a very foggy, cloudy day all the uh, flights are cancelled because of the fog and yeah it's it's a lovely day to be in office <laughs> good stuff cool well a bit of uh, housekeeping before we get started so if you've got any issues around like the tech side or anything like that we will endeavor to sort that out just use either the the chat or the Q&A panel to do that. And if you have any questions for Brad or myself as the session runs along, please use the Q&A panel to do that. So we're gonna keep this quite an informal session. You know, we're get, we've got a kind of a bit of a format that we're gonna run through, but we're happy to go in different directions. So if you've got any questions, please ask those. We might answer them as we go along, or we're definitely gonna stick around for a Q&A at the end, and we'll definitely answer them for you then. So let's get into it. And before we get into the session and I introduce Brad, I just want to touch on a few things, which is why is a website still important? You know, there's social media now, there's all these different places where you can be online, but a website is still really important for accounting and bookkeeping firms. And I'll give you three reasons why. Number one is that it's still the center of your online world. And what do I mean by that is that, you know, you can have a Facebook page, you can have a LinkedIn page, you can have a listing on Google, but at the center of that is still your website. And that's the kind of the, the one place of truth on your, on your online world. And it's the one place that most people are going to look. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, and, you know, the second place is that even if you are, the second reason why a website is important is, that even if you are marketing on social media, for example, you still post your content, say on your blog, and you share it out to social media. That tends to be a really good workflow. And Brad's gonna demonstrate how he does that a little bit later. So that's really important. Um, another reason is that you know it's the first place that people who get referred to you will check. So you know I call it sealing the deal with the referrals is that if someone gets referred to you, we all love referrals. It's the warmest way you can get leads. But what are they going to do as soon as they get referred to you? And probably not just going to give you a call. They're going to do a bit of due diligence, going to do a bit of snooping around your website and check you out. So that's another reason why websites are still important. And the final one, which I think is really undervalued, and Brad's going to show how he, no, he doesn't undervalue it. He does this a lot with his website, is your website's not just about leads. It's not just about new clients it's about your existing clients as well and there are certain things you can do to bring existing clients back to your website and keep them sticky you know help them retain uh, help you retain them so there's just a few reasons why i think a website is still important and we're going to talk about how to create a really awesome website that meets some of those goals that i've just talked about there sorry Matt. since it's informal can i just um um, just make a point there. So um, I, I think if you want to compare the website, is, uh, it's your office. If you have a social media or things, other places, that means um, if you want to compare it with the shop, you would have a market stalls in the different places and you sell them in a street fronts and all that, um, one product or two product. But um, those people, if you don't attract them to your main shop, which has got all your stocks, um, you're not going to make the benefit of it. So your office has got, um, your, which is your website, has got everything that you have, um, all your products. So accounting um, as a service, um, you can um, you can compare it with the product, and all the services that we provide is there. And when the um, something broken in a shop, we take it back to the shop and get, ask them to fix. 
when you can't work it out, you call the shop and the shop will help you or somebody in the shop customer service will help you to fix it and get it going. So if you think about your website, like your shop, your office, then it changes the way that you're looking at the website. So your website is not your business card, it's, it's your office. Sorry. That's so good. Now that's a really good analogy. And um, so I just wanted to, before we get into the, the main content of the session, would be um, for you, Brad, to just give us a bit of background to yourself and um, obviously your firm and, and a little bit of your zero journey as well would be great. Thanks. Cool. Um, thank you, Matt. Um, hi, everybody. Um, uh, my background is um, IT, so I had a bit of background in IT, worked in the IT world, and then I used to teach um, business uh, marketing um, IT. I used to teach Microsoft, and um, to show my age, uh, in the beginning, I used to teach um, DOS and BASIC. I don't know if any of you um, remember, if you remember, put it in the chat. I would be interested to see <laughs> if anybody remember DOS Basic. So um, it goes back that far. Um, the, uh, my accounting and zero journey, if you want to look at that, we started Wise Advice back in 2005. Um, and because my background was, um, was um, IT, I was always looking for a solution. And I was lucky enough that in 2006, 2007, Zero in New Zealand started. And um, when they started, they were not looking even for the partner channel as, as a such. It was just a product for the end user. So in the beginning, when we were using Zero, and I was trying it with my client, it was just, okay, I'm getting one license and the second license for um, that had a bit of discount because you had two and as you were just buying a bit more you would get a bit of discount and I was using it as a, as a user not as a partner and they didn't have a partner channel on a day dot when they started and soon after that they realized the partner channel and that's how zero grew uh, to what it is today taking care of partners working with partners and building a community of partners so we've been a zero partner since 2007, which is the early days of zero. There were um, in the office, there were a handful of people. Uh, been to the first zero conference here in Napier in um, Eastern uh, um, North Island of New Zealand. And uh, it was about 45 people um, in the room, uh, which uh, now you look at it um, in um, Brisbane or Melbourne or anywhere in Australia, they have three, 4,000 uh, people in a row. It's quite a different different company for uh, with what it was there. So we started there, then uh, we become 100% zero. Um, so we moved all our clients from the systems that we had to zero um, because we could see the efficiency of zero back in 2010. And we didn't want, so we wanted, um, my vision was creating a, a, basically a production line that we don't have to switch between the systems. So all the stuff are concentrating on one line and everybody uses the systems in this uh, production line to um, produce the um, compliances and reports and everything we need for the clients. Um, so that's how um, we moved everything and our efficiency gone up the roof um, because we could do um, what a you know, 20 person um, firm could do um, with five uh, people. So, um, and now we are here, we um, platinum partner, we've been platinum partner for, well, I don't know, I can't remember, five, six years. We have three offices. Um, two in Auckland um, and one in Melbourne, Australia. And that's about it. I don't, I don't think I missed anything, Matt. Have I? Oh, very good. You've been to every Australasian Zero Con since, right? Since yeah, I think I've been, to, I last count, I think I've been to 11, 11 of them. Yeah. I went, I went to San Diego in June and that was my 10th, so he beat me. You're going to soon beat me because I haven't been to US as zero cons or a UK zero cons. I've been just, just New Zealand and Australia. Very good. Cool. Well, I can't beat Brad's story, but um, a little bit about me. I'm the founder and CEO of Biz Inc. And um, we work with, with accounting firms, bookkeeping firms, helping them with websites and marketing. And I think we've probably built 
probably 300 websites for zero partners over the years. Um, so we know a little bit about websites and we know a little bit about um, what works for zero partners. And that's what I want to share with you today. And, and Brad is one of our clients at BizInc. He's one of our most successful clients. So I thought it'd be really cool to bring his learnings. He's very kind to share that with us today. And we'll talk through some of those points. So we're going to keep this really, really practical. Um, and um, basically my goal for um, this webinar today is to give you two or three things that you could change on your website. That's what I want all of you to leave with today. It'd be like two or three things, not 10, because you won't do those, like two or three things you could change on your website and you could do them today. Um, because it's about, what I, well, I don't call it this, I've stolen it from someone else, is, is marginal gains. So marginal gains is, if anyone's a fan of cycling, you can chat, type yes on, in, into the chat. But um, so Team Sky, is um, a professional cycling team now called Team Ineos. And they've kind of dominated professional cycling for the last decade. And um, I'm a big cycling fan originally from Britain. And British cycling used to really suck. When I got into it, like early 2000s, British cycling was, was really bad. And, you know, professionally, it was, it was really poor. And a guy called Dave, Dave Railsford came in and he ran the Olympic team and then eventually Sky, which is a professional team, which is built around a kind of core British team. Now, what he realized was that you can't get big gains in success. You can't get 10% gain. You know, it's just not possible because everyone's really well trained and, um, you know, possibly there's some pharmaceutical help in there as well, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> is, um, but um, what he realized was that, you know, you can't get a 10% gain, but what you can do is make 10 things 1% better to get that same gain or, you know, 100 things 0.1 percent better and and you know the the results of that are, are pretty spectacular you know um they're kind of controversial team but put that to one side they they made a lot of revolutions in technology and all these little small things like diet that really helped them and it's the same with websites right there's not something that we're going to show you today that's probably going to make a massive difference and maybe a couple actually i'll call out but um most of these things are just going to give you a small benefit I say that's a 1% benefit, but if you can take away two or three things, you know, uh, that's a 3% gain and maybe you do, you know, three more, that's a 6% boost for your website. So that can make a real substantial difference. So that's my goal. And I'll ask you if we've kind of fulfilled that at the end. So we're going to start with design. So look, first impressions count with websites and I think a great website design is still really, really important. Um, you know, that, that first impression counts. So, um, Brad, you talked about your IT background and, you know, we first met you were one of my first clients back in, you know, 2012, it would have been. Um, and I think you would built a website for yourself in the past. You certainly managed that. Why did you choose to outsource your website? Um, there's so many things involved and in, um, basically, um, you know, these days there are so many different WordPress and Wix and this and that. Um, you can go design a website, but it's not necessarily um, the efficient way of doing it. So by using you guys, because our, we had our website on WordPress um, before we moved to you guys, um, the first thing was um, the security issue because um, we had problem just keeping um, because we're accountants at the end of the day. I can't um, basically keep myself up to date with all the different patches and different threads and different things. And it was hard to keep up with that. So that was one thing. And the second thing was um, the uh, basically coming up with all the resources and things that you guys have. And that was a great value because if you wanted to go create all those resources that you guys uh, already created, it's just inventing the really from scratch, it would have cost me a lot more than what I um, pay for a website to you guys. So um, that was kind of a no brainer for us when we moved to you guys. Okay, cool. And um, so uh, we do two types of design, right? We do what we call standard design, which is where you pick a kind of layout um, and, and we customize that. Or we do like a fully custom design. So. Um, you went for a custom design, but before I can, I mean, what I always say to our clients is that, you know, um, there's, in terms of your website's performance, it doesn't matter which one you go with. Content's far more important. 
I'm yep. going to talk about that in a minute. But you did go for a custom design, and I think I'm quite interested to know why you did that, and and what are those kind of custom elements that you thought were particularly important. So um, this is <coughs> the website that you see now on the screen. Is us? If you remember, this is our second version. We had another website with you guys. Yeah. Um, before I get onto your question, I'll just back to my analogy for the shop um, or office. You wouldn't set up a shop and don't paint it and don't change the decoration every you know so many years depends on what sort of shop you have but same as your website you have to refresh your website and change it every now and then um to make it um you know um up with the trends and what's happening the technology is changing the things that you can do on your website is changing all the time so it is very important to change that. so that's one thing the um, reason that we went for the custom design is First of all, as a counter or business coach or advisor, we um, we tell our clients to be unique and have a unique selling point. So you want to stand out and be unique in the way uh, you want, um, based on your culture, based, based on your brand, based on how you uh, deal with the client. So um, that's very important. So by uh, doing the custom design, you wouldn't be exactly the same as any other practices that using the templates um, and the standard website. So that's one thing. The other thing is, um, again, going back to the culture and your vision for your company, we wanted to have a face um, for our website. Um, and um, that's the reason you see our client um, images. Um, obviously, this is aesthetic. If you go to our wise if you want, dot uh, code and zip, yeah. You'll see this is changing. Um, basically, it's got a video testimonial. This is our actual client. We didn't make up these testimonials. Um, so it gives that, um, you know, the proof to whoever visits um, our website. And we made the, the, like, if you look at each of the testimonials, um, if you close that, see, great business partner. Um, accounting is transparent, made accounting transparent and simple. So. We didn't try to bombard. So if um, you look at the full testimonial, it's a big, long um, you know, paragraph and video, two minutes video, but we just took one message, revolution now is my business. So if you go um, watch the video, it's quite long. So, and we wanted to basically, in all the messages that we had that, hey, um, we become a partner in your business, here's a testimonial. We save you time, here's a testimonial. Which are transparent and friendly. Here's a testimonial. Um, so we wanted to basically um, show the, those messages, and also we have a um, lot more kind of information because it's a custom. Uh, we can do different things and fit different things that we want to um, do in our website, which is very important. That's awesome. And how much did you have to pay them, Brad? Um, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, I, honestly, this is something that I recommend to all of our clients. Like, I think put your clients front and center on your website. Like, people don't really care about you. <laughs> like, exactly. Um, and people can relate. Hey, um, you know, um, you know, I'm very similar to this lady or that guy, or my business is similar. So people relate to you more. Uh, you become yeah. human. So we talk about AI and, you know, accounting is going to change. We're going to all become robots. And all, always when I talk to other accountants, I say, don't be scared of that. Just try to be more human. Don't put yourself behind your office doors and behind your static website with no images. Just try to be human and try to show your human side and friendly side. And that, that attracts more to robots can't ever be on that. So... Yeah. Um, that that's my one message for you guys. Try to be more human, and um, and that that will bring you more clients and more good clients. I mean, I think this is something that I would. Uh, we, we're doing a bit of research and looking at who you know who our best performing clients in terms of the website, and you know one common theme across pretty much every single one of them. They had a similar header to Brad and Wise Advice have got, which was they put their clients first. They put a testimonial up front. Um, I was talking at ZeroCon in San Diego recently, and you know, one of the things I was saying was that put these testimonials right at the front and throughout your website because while I would definitely advocate spending money on copywriting, you know, 
the best copyright in the world can't create something more authentic than stuff like this. And, and particularly you've got a video as well. So it's really, really important. Just one more comment there. Some of the accountants I had a chat with, they put a testimonial and they just put Sarah, they, and I asked them, okay, why you don't put what they're doing and why don't you put the full name? And they say, oh, we're scared that, you know, somebody come and steal our clients and say, okay, if you're not that confident that the client's going to go after giving you the testimonial, you have a problem in there. So try to, because by putting um, the full name of the business, obviously, we're promoting our clients because that gives them a link back. If you go, you can go to the website and have a look at the business. And we're confident that, you know, servicing this client so well, they're not going to go anywhere else. Um, so we're confident about that and we're putting the full details that gives a proof that, that these are real people. This is a real business. This is not my cousin that I brought and put it in front of camera and asked them to do a um, testimonial for us. Yeah, awesome. I'm just conscious we've got a lot. I'd love to keep talking about this, but um, we, we've got, got a lot to get through today. And I think um, we'll move on to the next section about content, but I think one of the um, kind of best um, accolades that Brad could have and in terms of his website is that there's quite a few other firms have tried to copy it and, and one who literally copied the whole website. Hey, Brad, no names mentioned, but they, yeah. they literally copied your whole website and copy, right? Yeah, uh, it's just, yeah, don't do that. Don't copy the contents. The other thing that uh, the other thing that's happening, I'll give you a technical tip here. When you copy an image and just take it to your website, it links it back to the original website. So that original website, if the guy goes and see where is the traffic coming from, I can see, okay, is the traffic coming from this website that is copied me, but they didn't even bother to check, but they changed the image. So the image was still hosted in our server, so I could see traffic coming from there, and that's how I saw it. But we, yeah, it's it's not professional. It's it's you know, as accountants, it's just not not good enough. Um, so we learn all about ethics and all that. Um, that that's 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 a huge issue with this sort of thing. So don't copy it. <laughs> well, I always talk about it's, it's kind of good to copy in marketing, but not exactly. You know, everyone's copying in the sense no. of, you know, the well, idea. By all means, go to our website, look at the ideas, look at some of the contents, um, try to change and make it, make it your way because, again, that's your vision, that's your brand, and try to change it. I, I have no problem with that. And I do it sometimes. I just If I find the good content in any of the competitors' website, I'll not going to copy the whole thing, but I get the idea, um, make it my own, and then use it. That, that's absolutely, absolutely fine. Yeah. One of my favorite quotes from Pablo Picasso, he said, a good artist borrow, great artist steal. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on, we'll have a look at content. I think this is the, one of the most important things is content, you know, not just in your website, but in your marketing. And um, the first thing that we're going to talk about was a, a lead magnet. So. You, know, you can see one on the right hand side of the screen here and what a lead magnet is is basically a piece of valuable content that you give away and you capture someone's email address so basically the idea is that you know like most most accounting websites even a good website like brad's the conversion rate of visitors to people who get in touch is quite low like really low and um you so what you're trying to do is Get those people who are kind of interested, but they're not quite ready to engage you or call you or whatever. You're trying to grab them. So give away some content. Um, and, you know, there's different, Brad's got a few lead magnets on his site. So there's um, a business plan course. Business owners really like business plan templates, courses. So this is something we worked with Wise Advice to create. And this was one you wanted to have a chat about, wasn't it, Brad? The, um, this this download that you got here yeah so uh, i think um yeah lead magnets are great so just again go back to that shop or if you go to the expo have a stand you're not just going to stand there and waiting for people to come to you and use your services you would probably put a um, i don't know ball there and have a draw so people put the you know business cards there to go for a draw and try to contact them later because not everybody's going to come and you know, um, be able to interact with you there. 
Um, people are hesitant to come sometimes. They're scared in the expo situation to come. It's exactly like that. On a website situation, people don't know. They are not sure. Um, they might just look at it in the wrong time and the kids come into the room and they go and they, you know, there are so many things happening at the time that they're looking at your website that they might not interact with you. And if they go out, they're going to forget about um, the website address and all that. So it is very important to try to capture um, something that you can communicate with them and then um, basically uh, we'll talk about it later, see if you can make them become a client. Um, so I think I think that analogy of the expo it's it's uh, very true and um, here um, you see the landing page that we have so we call it landing page the reason we call it landing page as you can see it doesn't have the menu of the website on the top it doesn't have any information other than okay what is this free download about and they can download it and they put the email address and name so we we don't ask for a lot of telephone number what's your business and what do you think about us. It's just very easy. Put the name, put the, tel uh, the email address, and um, then submit, and they can download it. Um, and it doesn't mean that we're going to spam them after this and send them all sorts of information, um, you know, left, right, and center. And we'll talk about that strategy later on. But landing pages are important. Again, um, not everybody comes to your website through your homepage. So lots of people come to our website through landing pages, through a specific piece of information that they're looking for. And by um, consuming that information, then they go to our website later and they see the rest of the information. So it's very important to provide those customized information um, to people and see what they're looking for. Depends on your target market. You can create a piece of um, information, cheat sheet, ebook, um, calculators like this. And when they, um, you know, when they Google it, they have that problem. When they Google it, they're going to come to your website because you're providing the answer that, that, to that question. And they're going to consume that and download it and they leave, they're happy to leave the email address for you so you can communicate with them later. Cool. And just to underline that timing is one of the most important things in marketing. And people often think of, you know, the thing I often say is like people buy when they want to, not when you want to. So just because someone's on your website and you, you know, or you've sent them a campaign doesn't mean they're going to sign up. And particularly for you guys as accountants and bookkeepers, it's a very long sales cycle, right? So, you know, the, someone might visit your site, but they're just doing some research and the key is to sort of stay top of mind with them. So when they become ready, when the timing is right, that you're there. So that's why this stuff really works. And especially for accounting is a longer cycle. And also, the, they need to build that trust. And, um, you know, sometimes people, they come and get this information from us and say, oh, I've been asking this from my accountant for ages and he didn't, you know, answer it properly and couldn't give, it, give the information to me. But here you are, uh, just search it and, you know, found the information. So it's a great value. Yeah, absolutely. Um just had a question come in from Byron. He's asking about, you know, with landing pages, not having a header. Um, Byron's one of our clients. So um, there's a way we can do that for you, Byron. Can you, Ray, if you, if you email in to uh, the support team or use the chat, we can help you do that, which is like removing all of the, the menu from a landing page. Um, that's not a 100% rule, but, you know, you can test it. You can um, ask Bizink to do one without the um, headers and what with headers and, and do what they call A-B testing to see which one of them gets more. Um, but um, we found that if, if it's a distraction, we, we're a distracted generation these days. There's a phone, there's like pop-ups here and there, and there's TV on with Netflix. So if you can grab their attention to one thing and get them to concentrate, I, I found that's, that's better. Yeah, cool. Okay, so I wanted to quickly move on to the zero side of things. Obviously, we're talking about you building a zero website, and um, you know, like what what are the kind of like key uh, elements of a of a zero website? So, I mean, I think generally you've got to build a good website, but there's obviously some specific zero stuff. So here we've got your zero landing page, Brad, and um, I thought we could run through some of the other things like the resources, the um, you know, that kind of thing that yeah. you have on your website. 
Cool. So um, obviously the landing page is important, especially when you um, come from the zero um, advisor listing. Um, so um, they're looking for zero information. So to bring them here to zero landing page is important because as I say, they're looking for a piece of information and then they come to your website and see other things. And, um, and most people, sorry to interrupt, most people put that link as their homepage. And to me, that's just throwing away traffic, right? You know, zero. Someone's come to your website. They're interested in zero, and they're interested in you. They've clicked on your link. Don't just put them on the home page. You need to put them on a page that's specific to zero. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so that's that's about the zero landing page is very important. Um, the other thing is the uh, resources. Um, so uh, Bizink has got this. Um, zero um, resources which has got lots of information and um, it's it's you know again both for your client and both for new leads so if your client asking for this information you don't want them to go anywhere else you want to bring your clients here go back to the first analogy of the shop and uh, uh, um, or office um, if they have any problem you want them to come to you not to go to zero because more traffic you have um, there is more chance um, of getting higher in the Google ranking, as well as more the client sees your brand and sees your website, um, they get more attached to it, and it's more opportunity for them to refer clients. So if I'm in a, um, you know, looking at the resources here, I found some the answer to the question I'm looking for, um, then it's more likely to straight away if my mate asks me, hey. I'm doing you know any good accountant, do you know any good zero accountant? Then I say, oh, wise advisors, um, it's great. And uh, they've, got, they've got lots of information. And the brand is in front of them because people forget about it. They're not that they intentionally don't want to refer you to their friends and family. It's just you're not on the top of the mind. But by providing all this information on your website, they come back to your website, they consume your brand, they consume your content, and um, you are always on the top of mind. And, and I think this is very much an example of those marginal gains, isn't it? It's not, not something that can, you know, we often get asked, like, what's the ROI? What's the return on investment of doing this, that, or the other? And, you know, you can't always say that. You know, what's, what's the return on investment of being nice to your clients? I mean, it's one of the most important things you can do, but you can't put a number on it. Um, and I think these things add up over time, right, combined with all the other stuff. Exactly, yeah. Um, uh, we're going to cover it a bit later, but I think the zero login is something that, you know, is really important to have. We have a client area on our sites. Um, you know, you get asked a lot, right? You've told me that, oh, clients forget their zero login. So put it on your site and tell clients, well, look, that's where you should come to log into zero. And again, it's just that exposure to your brand, isn't it? Yeah, it's not necessary to get a new leads or anything, but your, your client will come there and goes from there to zero. Um, and uh, and that's a great way to bring them every day rather than go to zero and log in. They come here and log in from here. So every day you have that person come to this page, and um, and it's a great way to for them to see all your new things and again see your brand and um, get the sticky. <laughs> Well, we'll move on to blogs now. But just one final thing on that is that I often say to firms. Um, how many of your clients, or I'll ask you this guy, you, I'll ask all you guys listening now this question. Um, so type in, if you, if this is yes, just type in yes or, or no to the, the answer. So whose clients know about all the services that you offer? So do you think all of your clients know about all the things you do? Yes or no? And, and because if they don't, that's your biggest marketing opportunity because existing clients are 25 times more likely to buy from you than new leads so I've got some no's coming in so I ask this question all the time I asked it when I was talking in um, at, at zero con like I mentioned nobody put the hand up in a room of I don't know how many it was 150 200 people nobody put the hand up so that's your biggest marketing opportunity that's the low-hanging fruit and websites a great way to do that and um, you know one of the things you can do this have a very active blog um, which which you do right Brad yeah, just just before we go that, um, because you talk about ROI, I think more than ROI from one accountant to other accountant, the most important thing as far as numbers with the, with whatever you do for your marketing is the cost of acquisition. 
So you have to see um, how much would it cost um, to basically gain a new fee, not necessarily a new client, because it might be existing client buying new things. So that, that's, that's a new fee that you're going to um, be charging. So it's very important to kind of measure that and keep an eye on it. And um, the good website is one of the way that um, you, can, you can do that. Sorry. No, um, that's all good. No, and it is, that's one of the key metrics, right? Especially if you put it against lifetime value. Yeah. Not a lot of firms know lifetime value of clients that I speak to, but, you know, it's easy to say, oh, well, the ROI in like the first year, but you might keep clients for five or 10 years. Yeah, exactly. So that could be worth, you know, I, I worked this out actually in Australia and it was like, you know, you're talking tens of grand over the years, you know, maybe more, maybe a lot more. Um, so, you know, spending like a hundred bucks, let's just say it's a hundred bucks to get that client is pretty cheap. You know, it's, uh, anyway, what we, we, we've got a lot to get through. So blogs, Brad, you, you actually do a lot on your blog, right? Yeah, we do a lot um, on a blog. Um, we use some of the Bazink um, blog, which is a great resource. You guys are doing a great job, but um, come up with um, some of the contents there. And we use our own. Again, you don't want to be the same as everybody else. And you have to add your flair. You have to, you have to add your, um, you know, your ideas and things. So a blog is very important. Again, it's not going to necessarily... Um, create traffic or create leads straight away. Um, but it's one of those marginal gains. You have to keep doing it. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be, I'm doing it for a month and I didn't get any leads or any, um, you know, we've been doing it for years and it's just becoming constant um, source of um, traffic and leads for us as a, as a result. And I think the main trick about the blog is, um, Providing the valuable updates, information on what's happening on the industry or business or, um, you know, economy. And also answer the questions that people are looking for um, um, answer. Um, so see, sometimes we get the idea for the blog from the questions that people like that leads um, we have a blog about the lease or buy as well, and it goes and push, pushes people to the landing page that you guys saw. So it's like a process. They come read the blog and they want to download it and they go there. So why we did this? Because lots of our clients say, hey, Brad, I'm looking for this brand new car. Um, shall I lease it or shall I buy it? And I had to go through the same thing on and on and on again. I thought, okay, we're going to create a blog. We're going to create a calculator. Um, here's the um, information. And then if somebody asks these questions, they say, okay, I'll send you an email. I send them an email and it's got all the information there. Um, so it helps, it saves me time because I don't have to go through the whole thing again. Um, and also there are lots of people out there other than my clients that are looking for this information. Because if five of my clients asking for this question, asking this question from me, there are definitely more people out there asking the same question. So that's the best way to, um, to find the topic for your uh, blog. Ask your staff. Um, to list any questions that they get. It might be, okay, how, to, how do I create a repeating invoice in Zero? You can do a blog about that. Yeah, those information are in the Zero resources and are in um, the Zero website, and, um, but the fact is uh, you never know which way the um, people coming through. So go back to the shop. You don't put one thing on the front. If, if you have a special, you're just going to put a, put a sticker everywhere. So you don't know which one of those stickers or uh, ads they're going to see. And uh, this is one way of doing it. So it doesn't matter if that, that content is available in resources or somewhere else. You can still create it as a blog post and people might come consume it that way rather than go the other way. One more thing. We, oh, don't, I know we have a lot of information to go through, but try to... Um, Think about people um, and how they consume. So some people are good at reading. So if you give me something to read, I would, I'm, I'm mildly dyslexic, dyslexic, so I can't read, sit and read the whole thing. So I personally consume videos more than anything else. Um, some people, they just like infographs and images. So um, the other thing you can do, if, if you have a piece of content, you can uh, repurpose it on a different way. So if you have a video, you, you can make a video and then same content can be a text blog and, um, and can be an image explaining what it is. 
um, and you can put them all in a blog. So if somebody comes to that blog post, they can see all three of them or all two of them or whatever you have there. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Brad. And I guess there's a couple of myths around blogs. One, I got asked this this week, was like, um, Google loves blogs, don't they? I'm like, no, not really. Uh, there's nothing about blogs that Google loves. So I'll just dispel that myth for you. I mean, and Google doesn't particularly love new content. And that's another bit of a myth. Like what Google likes is stuff that's really relevant. So, you know, like um, Brad's example of like buying, releasing, you know, particularly if you made that very New Zealand specific, that's, you know, if someone's searching for that, that's what Google's looking for. You know, if it's the only piece of content that's on that doesn't, Google doesn't care if it's new or not. That's that's the definitive source. And sometimes they might like it that it's it's been around for a while. So that's a bit of a myth. Um, and and the other one is that, you know, um, the, the, the duplicate content myth. So I get asked this every day. And like Brad, I have actually something I have to send out. Same thing I send out to clients all the time is that um, having the same content on different websites is, is going to, Google's going to penalize you and, it's just made, something that's been made up by SEO people. If anyone wants that video, just Google um, uh, duplicate SEO and a guy called Matt Cutts, M-A-T-T-C-U-T-T-S. So he's the head of search at Google and he will dispel that myth for you once and for all. But um, basically, you know, Brad uses some content that, you know, we provide for him. But if, you know, if you Google zero accountants in Auckland, then, you know, you normally come on the top page, hey, Brad? Yeah, and, and it changes all the time, but we're not fussed about it because we, we try to, you know, get people um, on other ways and it just comes up and down. It's not a, you know, being on the first page of Google um, search is very good, but it's not the only thing that you need because people are not l looking in Google only uh, when um, they want the information. But if the specific question is there, and they're looking for that answer, they're gonna, they're gonna find it there. And sorry, again, going back to that human thing, try to put the question as you would ask as a normal human, because the things are changing. People are not searching Auckland accountants anymore. <laughs> they say, I'm looking for a um, good hospitality accountant in Auckland. Um, so <laughs> that's, that's how people start to asking questions because of the likes of the Google, uh, Alexa and Siri, people talking um, to do search. That's one thing. And when they do that, when even they want to talk to questions, they, they, they ask the question how they, they talk. They don't use the keyboards only. So they ask the full question. So if you can answer and have that in your title as people would have asked, as close as possible, because everybody asks the question differently, um, then you would get, get more traffic. Thanks, Brad. Um, just getting asked about that video that I mentioned. If you search for Matt Cuts, M A T T, like my name, Matt Cuts, C U T T S, and just put Matt Cuts duplicate content, the video will come up and you will see him talking about that. You know, there is no penalty. Google, he's the head of search at Google. He was the head of search at Google. We don't penalize duplicate content. Most of the internet is duplicate content through social media or whatever people reposting. There's no reason for them to penalize you unless what you're doing is spammy. And generally, the people who are telling you this duplicate content thing is people who want to sell you content. Just always remember that one. <laughs> but um, moving on, we've got two more kind of main sections to get through. I want to keep this... Um, under the hour. So features, um, the two of the key ones I, I can just run through quickly. The first one, Brad alluded to it at the start, would be your website has to be secure, HTTPS. That means you've got an SSL certificate. So if you, if you haven't got one of those, so I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So if you look in Brad's website, HTTPS here in the padlock, connection is secure. Now, if your website doesn't have that, it will say in, in browsers, insecure, um, which obviously is a pretty bad look if you're an accountant or a bookkeeper. You know, you're looking after people's data. It should be secure. And then the other one is that if your website is mobile friendly. So if you want to check that out, Google, Google mobile friendly test, and that will give you a way to check your website. Or you can go to... Uh, if you go to the Bizink website, we have a website audit. We can check that and a bunch of other things for you. Um, you you've got to have those two things. But um, aside from those, um, 
we talked about the the client login. Hey, Brad, and that's quite yeah. a cool feature. Um, do you, so some some of our clients have other logins. Um, what's this one? Lo, this one login into so this is this is our KPI dashboard. So this is um, we have a KPI dashboard that client can log in, and it's um, done by Featurely, yep. which uh, which is a reporting software. Um, yeah, cool. so if you go there, it shows futurely on the URL there. Uh, the client can log in and look at the KPI um, there. Yeah, cool. Um, and I think um, that's definitely one of those examples, like we said, of the marginal gains. You know, it's like not every client's going to do that, but it's definitely keeping people a little bit sticky. Um, and then, I mean, <laughs> Like we've talked about contents, I guess we spent the most time on that. It's the most important. But some of the other features that we see as important, I see if you agree, Brad, would be you know, the team page, the testimonials page. They're both pages that people come and check out when they're, you know, they might have been referred and they want to come and check you out. And obviously you've put a fair bit of time into this kind of what our clients say, the testimonials. Yeah. Say that the, and we know from our own research that the, the team page is the second most viewed page after at the home page for most of our clients. So do you see those two as important features on, on a zero partner site? Yeah, they, they are very important. Uh, so people, uh, when they want to make the purchase decision, they want to look at you, they want to look at your client. Also make sure that because people other than website, they're going to look at your LinkedIn profile um, because as a professional, they're with the information. So they're going to Google your name. And, um, and usually LinkedIn and Facebook comes on the top, but LinkedIn would be more public for them and more business um, related. So make sure those are up to date and you have a professional photos and things in there. Um, and also, um, you guys do it well in Bazinc. Um, make sure that people can contact you easy. It's like the, those telephone numbers on the top. Um, people shouldn't go to contact us and on a contact us, try to scroll up and down and find the, how they can contact you. If they come to the homepage, the telephone numbers are there. Um, whether they call from international number, they can call the first one. If they're in New Zealand, they want to call the 800 number, they can use the second one. Same thing on a... On a on their mobile as well. So if they go there, um, it's just right on the top. They can they can make a call. Um, so it's very important um, to make it as easy as possible for them to contact you. Because people are lazy online, right? Like people, you know, we talked about the conversion rate of accounting websites, very low. So if you've got all the effort of, you know, whether it's whatever marketing you've done, search, social, whatever, paid ads, it's all that effort to get people to your site. Don't make it hard for them to get in touch with you. So, you know, like Brad said, phone number, like, really prominent, you know, obviously you have a contact us. And I guess I was going to talk about forms in this section. We can maybe wrap it up in, in the integration side of it is two things that I think are an essential feature on accounting websites now. One would be meeting booking and the other one would be chat. Um, I mean, I really like chat. I know a lot of people have objections to this. So maybe, Brad, you can say how chats worked for you and um, I guess some of the objections that I hear from firms are like, well, who's going who's gonna to be monitoring this? Um, who's going to what if we're not there, those kind of things. So how has it worked for you and how would you kind of like talk to those potential objections that we get? So um, the, the chat is um, another way. So again, it depends on a person. Not everybody going to chat with you. Not um, some people going to call you. Some people going to email you. So providing different way that they can communicate with you is very important. And more and more people, depends on what sort of like one of our, um, target market are um, online sellers and Amazon sellers and all that. So those sort of people, they like to go and chat because they're usually technology savvy and they're always on a computer monitoring the, and, you know, the sales and the website and all that. So they're there. Um, they just want to go there and chat with you. Um, they get an instant answer um, and they don't want to, you know, talk to somebody, go through receptions and things. And even if you don't have a reception, they, they would think that they have to go through, you know, so many people to get to you and whether you're going to be 
um, available or not in a meeting, that, that would be the question. So the same thing can happen whether it's in a chat or in a telephone, you might not be available at the time. Um, so how we uh, overcome that, we use a bot to pre-qualify and take them through um, the, the first stage. So the bot will um, answer some of the questions and ask them what they're looking for. And then the bot will tell them whether we are available or not. And if you're not available, ask them, hey, um, they're not available now. I'll get them to contact you. Leave me your email or telephone number and I'll get them to contact you. So the bot is uh, kind of leading them. So you don't have to be instantly always checking your computer to see if somebody's in the chat. Uh, so the technology has changed quite a bit and you can, um, you can do that. And um, also uh, the chat is, um, basically um, creates um, lots of interaction with the clients that um, they are um, not necessary in New Zealand, for example, in our case. So they're overseas, um, they don't want to pay for the calls or they're uh, on a different time zone um, and um, they rather than contact us, which was a form before, people rather go to the chat and start chatting with us and see um, what they get. So. It is, it is a great way to do it. So this way, if somebody want to make a meeting, okay, do you want a meeting for Kikoi? For Kikoi meeting, here's a link. And they don't have to go with me. Okay, do you have time on Wednesday? Okay, I'll talk to my wife. No, Wednesday we can't. Okay, can you do Thursday? No, I can't. So it's just go back and forth. Okay, just go have a meeting there. Um, pick any time you want and I'll meet you. If you get a reminder, it looks more professional and it's easy for them so make it as easy as possible for them to um, talk to you to work with you even for existing clients if if you receive an email from me all my um the meeting links are there and um you, they can go um, make an appointment with me they don't need to call my office or talk to reception or talk to me um, it's done and I, I receive it in my calendar and i know they're coming and um and it's easy very good, thanks, Brad. So, um, anyone who's got any questions for Brad or myself, just use the Q and A window. We're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap up in a few minutes' time the session, and then keep on with the Q and A. Um, so, I guess forms is another element, and 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 really that integrates with um, with CRM, right? That would be kind of one of the big integrations that I would recommend, like your CRM. Um, or um, marketing software, and you guys use HubSpot, right? And kind of, well, I, I know this because Brad's actually a HubSpot reseller and um, um, helped us get started on HubSpot recently. So not not your usual accountant, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, that that's what you've got integrated with your site. But I think definitely having your CRM or certainly like um, Zero Practice Manager integrated in there is important. You'd say. Yeah, we, we HubSpot partner as well. So we have another company, not Wise Advice, which does HubSpot. And it's very important because HubSpot, it integrates with the Zero Practice Management. So um, so if you have a new client on Zero Practice Management, it pushes through HubSpot. And then um, basically um, you can track, keep track of um, your clients. Um, all your communications and emails for each client is recorded against that client and you can manage the leads because the worst thing is, um, you know, spend all this time and all these things and put your website up and you receive an inquiry and you busy, the email comes to you that somebody filled up the form, you forget it because it came like at 8 p.m. and tomorrow you have a busy tax um, due date or something and you forget to contact them and um, by the time you contact them, they're probably going to another accountant and um, and get the answer they want to. So it's very important to have CRM. Um, usually people um, of thinking of CRM say, hey, um, I have my clients there. No, this is going to take care of your leads. It's going to take care of your um, appointments. It's going to take care of your communication. It, it basically puts all your emails in one place. So HubSpot is um, it's a great one to integrate with WordPress and uh, the Bazing websites. It integrates with, uh, with XPM. And um, it's, um, it's got a free version that is free forever. Um, and you don't have to pay for it. Obviously, the paid version has got a lot more stuff in it that you can utilize. Um, but it starts from free, which is, which is amazing. There's no other software with those 
facility that is available for free forever. Um, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Brad. Well, I mean, we could talk about integrations all day long. There's, there's endless ones, but I think that's the key one. Uh, there's th three key ones, I think, is your meeting, booking, your chat. I put those as essentials. Like Brad's, this HubSpot does all of those, but you know, you should have a CRM ready if that's XPM or you know, a fully functioning kind of sales or marketing CRM. Have that integrated in with your website. Yeah. So just to draw things to a bit of a close, like I think that the, the zero features of the website, we've talked about a lot more than just zero, but I think the zero checklist that I'd put in there would be you need a landing page, you need your partner and add on logo. So Brad would have his platinum partner logo is, is very clear on the website. And, and all the other add ons that he used, like Unleashed or I don't know, Vent or whatever else, just put them there because they know that you kind of understand the whole. Um, platform cool and and again that's the same with like the login put the zero login on the site like you saw with brad's and those other ecosystem apps that you work with put them there as well and that, that makes your your website a destination for your clients the zero resources like we provide them for you at business all these videos from from zero tv and um that really important to have those i think on your site so you can own that relationship with your client um, didn't really cover this too much, but in some of Brad's testimonials, he'll mention zero. So zero in itself is probably not the thing that's going to pull in the lead. It's zero plus what was the benefit. So, you know, um, one of your clients is sort of like they save 70% of the time on paperwork. So that's, that's what you're selling on. You don't sell on the features, you sell on the benefits. So I mention those benefits of zero in the testimonials. And then finally, like optimizing the website for zero phrases. I mean, we could do a whole webinar on, on that, but making sure that, you know, um, you, you're mentioning that in those things that people are searching for on your site. So before I just sum up the whole session, um, I quickly wanted to cover this. Um, so Brad mentioned his other company, which is, is called Mark Zing and work with HubSpot. And I thought, you know, we'll, um, if you're looking for somebody you want, who could help you getting started with um, HubSpot, which is a, is a whole marketing platform, then, then talk to Brad. <clears throat> I'll give you our contact details so that you can do that. But I quite like this diagram that Brad has got here because um, what, it, what it shows is that, um, you know, the, a website isn't, isn't just kind of like the destination itself. It's part of a whole marketing journey. And as we've kind of alluded to, that's quite a long journey for accountants. It takes a, a long time to convert prospects or strangers into prospects, into customers, and eventually promoters, you know, people who are gonna refer to you. Um, so, you know, um, the the um, the website is at the center of that, but you do need all those other bits. You know, people aren't just going to turn up at your website because you built a nice website. It's like, you know, it's like the website is like the engine of a car. You still got to have the wheels, the chassis, the body, all those other things for it to work. You know, it might be the most important part, but you've got to have those other parts. And um, and so you know, to stretch that analogy of cars a little bit further, you know, Brad's got a cool website, but under the hood. There's a lot of stuff going on and, you know, sometimes I think we see these partners' websites that get held up and they look amazing, but sometimes under the hood, under the surface, there's not that much going on. So it's important to not just have the website, but the, the, the marketing journey to back that up. Hey, Brad. Yeah, it's just, a, again, go back to my shop analogy. You can't open a shop and expect people to turn up. You have to do the activity. Your shop can be nice. Your product can be nice. You're a nice person but people are not going to easily turn up um, to your shop. And um, it's, it's a busy world. It's lots of little alleys and streets, and your shop is going to be in one of those little alleys. So for people to come and pass you and come inside, it's unlikely. Um, so you have to work and promote it um, and, um, and basically um, get people to come to your website, to your shop. Um, so that's that's very important. And again, um, as you see here, the, the marketing journey doesn't end when they become customer. You want to delight those customers and make them your promoters so they can 
and send you more customers. Thanks, Brad. So we're going to stick around for Q&A. Fire any questions into the, um, the questions window. Just to sum up quickly, so we talked about design. It's really important, but, you know, don't put all your dollars into, into design. Content is just is, is more important, in fact. Um, and, and in the design and the content, you need to put your clients first. Just like on the Wise Advice site, you can see Brad's put his clients' testimonials and all of that. You know, we hit every presentation I see seems to have to mention Simon Sinek and start with why. I'm a bit cynical about it because I don't think clients – massively think about that they say think about what's in it for them first and first and foremost and that's what your website should be about what's in it for your clients to so put them first and foremost um, in terms of content you know, a lead magnet's really important that turns visitors into clients um, like Brad does outsourcing some of your content is um, is fine and it's not only fine it's going to free you up to do more valuable activities or things that you're better at but make sure you mix in some of your own content like brad does which is very specific to your clients so you know brad works with a lot of rental property owners um he'll have very specific content to them and that works really well that mix of content so um and just the final thing about content it's not like you it's not build it and they will come you've got to get out there and promote you know, the content whether that's on social or whatever you've got to promote the content um, in terms of features and integrations look essential things features wise you've got to have a secure website HTTPS and it should be mobile friendly um, three things um, that, that, that you know you can do in terms of features like give clients a reason to come back to your site so put the logins on there you know that zero login um, help seal the deal with referrals. The features that are going to do that is things like the team page and the testimonials. And the final one, the final thing that, that the features can do for you is save you time. So things like those integrations, like the meeting booking, um, you know, online forms to do onboarding, that can save you time. All really important things. Um, and, and we talked about integrations a little bit more, you know, things like integrating your CRM, really important. So hopefully I've given you, or we've given you there, some, some marginal gains. Um, if, if, if we have, please type in yes. If we haven't, say no, and we'll, we'll go and give ourselves a good telling off. But I hope we've given you some good stuff to go at there. And if you've got any questions, um, we're going to stick around for a Q&A. Now I've seen one question come in. We've got a couple of yeses. No, no, so oh. far. That's good. Can I ask one thing? Uh, what, what would it be one thing that you guys are going to go back to office um, and um, you know change in your website or think about changing in your website? One thing based on this conversations that we had today, um, it would be interested. I would be interested to see what you're going to do. And sorry, um, I just checked the messages. Uh, Julie and Kathy, you answered my question about DOS and basic. Sorry, I wasn't rude. It just I didn't um, see the messages till now. So. Uh, it's good to see um, people as young as me are here in this webinar as well. <laughs> <laughs> Julie's going to do the chat feature. That's awesome. I ha highly recommend doing that and the meeting booking. Really good. Um, so Ryan's asking a question on testimonials. How pushy should you be? Um, could you just qualify that a little bit more, Ryan? What you mean by pushy? I, what I'm thinking you mean is like you know how you ask clients for that i'll give you some tips on how we do it i oh, got it yeah okay thanks ryan so you know clients are busy you've got to make it super easy for them right and the best way you can do testimonials in my opinion is don't ask them to write them so most people aren't well, i'm gonna sound really harsh here but most people aren't very good at writing <laughs> so they they don't write as well as they often can speak the best way to get a real sounding testimonial is to talk to somebody because um, if they start to write it, they feel they've got to dress it up a little bit. So the way we do it is we just jump on a Zoom call or a Skype or whatever kind of system you use like that and we record it and then you get it in real language. You know, rather than that kind of like, Brad is very nice and we enjoy their services immensely and yeah, that kind of, it just sounds kind of rubbish. So what, what I'd be doing is talking to them recording it and then writing it up you, know, you can tweak it a little bit and get them to sign it off 
So it's like written in real language. Now, that means that it's much, much, much quicker for them because I think about it, if one of my suppliers rang me up and said, Matt, would you give me a testimonial? Um, I'd be, I've had to write it. I'd, I'd keep putting it off, I'll be honest. I would keep putting it off. But if they just said, can we talk to you for five minutes um, on you know, Tuesday, 10 a.m., sure, done. And I don't have to think really easy and maybe even send them a few things we want to talk to you about you know um you know we do these cash flow statements for you do you like those blah 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 and i can just reel it off done so that's the way i don't know how you do them brad that's the way we do them when we found that to be a really effective way to just smash them out really quickly i think we've lost brad You still there, Brad? Well, I will just carry on until we get Brad back. But yeah, that would be my recommendation around um, around testimonials. So um, one thing that me and Brad were talking about before, and I've seen a question come in on this, was how long should it take to follow up after um, after someone gets in touch with your website? Because... I've seen some of them say, oh, we'll get back to you within 48 hours. And honestly, these days now, like 48 minutes can be too long. Um, if you think it was a new lead looking to get in touch with you, what they've probably got, just like I've got, you know, um, I'll go put my browser back up. We've got all of these tabs here would be, you know, they might have your website and they've got, you know, all your competitors' websites in the different tabs. So, you know, if that was, um, you know, and if you wait for 48 hours, then, you know, maybe one of your competitors got back within, you know, a much shorter period. So I'd be saying you should be trying to get back to people almost within, within the hour if you can. So question from Byron is, um, what's the typical time cycle to close from um, a contact form or prospect when a lead comes through the website? I don't think there is a typical time cycle, you know, um, firms we work with and I know from our, our own, we've closed, we've closed deals like almost instantly. Um, and we've had ones, I, I can think of one actually in Auckland where Brad's based, where we took, um, three years to do the deal. It took me three years of, of talking to the guy before, before he said yes. So that sales cycle can really, really vary. Um, I think the ways that you can perhaps speed up your sales cycle is make sure that you're demonstrating value all along that kind of marketing or sales funnel. That would be one of the biggest tips that I could give you would be like to say um, at each point, follow up quite a bit and follow up with value. So um, the worst thing I ever see in sales, well, maybe it's not the worst thing, but it's a bad thing is, you know, when you get an email from a salesperson like, hi, Matt, I'm just following up and that's it. So, so basically, you just want me to give you some money. Like if you, if you need to work harder than that, you know, you got to go, hey, I'm following up because I saw this article and it, it's really relevant to what we talked about. Some of the problems you're having, um, there you go. Because I know, you know, that the guy wants to sell me and that, that's all good. But you got to be useful to people. So. We found definitely to try offer that value, be consultative along the sales process is really going to speed things up. Sorry, I just um, had a problem I'm back. That's all right. Um, so yeah, just on those two questions, Brad. You know, like um, what we just talked about um, getting testimonials. Um, what's your method for getting testimonials? So the testimonials, the best thing is, if, if, again, it goes back to, um, as the chicken and egg type of thing. So if you have a good website, it's a, um, the, your client would be interested to put something there with the link back to the website because they're going to traffic out of your website. Believe it or not, sometimes people find a website, tree your website, and they're going to go there. Um, so if you tell them that, that I just help them promote um, their site. Um, that's that's great. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, um, look at the clients that you're having a good relationship, and possibly you can use their services as well. 
Um, and if, if they're good, obviously, you're going to give them testimonials and ask them for testimonials. As a business, you would need lots of services. You need, I don't know, lawyers, you need insurance, you need um, printing, you need um, marketing. So you need all sorts of services. And if you can find one of those in your client base, um, and you're using um, their services, uh, it's as easy as, uh, hey, um, you know, I'm, I'm giving you testimonials and um, can we just do something together? Um, so that's another method that we um, use sometimes. Okay, cool. Um, probably got time for one more question if anyone wants to send one in. Just want to mention what's on screen. So like if you want a website like Brad's, um, we work with, I think we, yeah, we would have built over 300 websites as zero partners over the years. And so if you want to, you want to talk to us about that, we can help you out with a bunch of the stuff that we talked about today. Just drop us an email at hello at bizincconline.com or you can use our booking link there, book at demo.as.me forward slash demo. That's a bit of a mouthful or just go to the website and click book a demo button there and, and we can have a chat about that. Um, for the HubSpot, can they um, email you as well if they're interested? And then we can absolutely, maybe yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you're interested in talking to Brad about HubSpot as well, then use those same contact details on screen there. Hello at bizincconline.com or just go to our website um, and, and hit book a demo. When you book the demo, there's an option to put, um, to put uh, like the, what, what you want to talk about. And so we can just forward those to you, Brad. Cool. Very good. Well, I don't see any more questions coming in now. So that just leaves me to say thank you, Brad, for making the time to come along and share that with us today. It's been awesome. Great. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you, everybody, for listening. I hope you um, um, you make some changes and wish you all the best um, with your website journey and your zero journey. Uh, feel free to add me on LinkedIn if you have any, um, you know, zero questions or practice questions or anything about accounting. I'm more than happy um, to help and collaborate. And um, yeah, looking forward to see you around in zero cons. Thanks, Brad. And thanks everyone for coming along today. We'll send out the recording um, tomorrow, most likely. And so we'll get that out to you and um, include... The, yeah, the recording and some of the links to some of the stuff that we've, we've talked to today. So yeah, thanks for coming along and have a great rest of your day. Cool. Thank you. Bye. Bye.